Rachel Johnson, and I'm here again with Len Berman, Director of Tax Policy Center. I'm here to talk to him about the VAT tax. I hear you're trying to raise our taxes. What's up with that? <laughs> well, actually, I'm trying to cut your taxes right now <laughs> because, you know, if we don't get our act together, we're going to leave you and your children and grandchildren with enormous debts, and it'll cripple the economy, and you'll have to pay really, really high taxes. So I think that's a bad thing. So what exactly is a VAT, and how does it differ than just a glorified sales tax? It actually is a glorified sales tax. <laughs> so, People, so a VAT is like a sales tax, except it's collected it's in stages from each producer. So let's take an example. We have a $2 loaf of bread, uh, which you can buy at the Giant. And a bread, bread, as you know, is not, it's not produced by the people at the Giant. They sell it, but every, everyone along the way is producing different parts of it. So if, it's, if you had a 10% cent, 10 sales tax, then the $2 loaf of bread would come with 20 cents of sales tax on it. But on the VAT, each producer along the way pays part of the tax. So the farmer gets 60 cents, and he would have to pay 6 cents and that tax when he sells it. We've got here we go. Here. These are we've got the best props in the tax policy center. <laughs> These are pennies. It's a kind of currency that used to have value. Uh, the miller who grinds up the wheat gets seventy-five cents. My guess is that farmers and millers everywhere are wishing that they got such a large share of a loaf of bread, but never mind. So there's you know, three cents, six cents, seven cents. Where's my half pence? Uh, so they seven and a half cents from the miller. The baker gets forty cents, and he would pay. You're probably getting getting the hang of this. Four cents in tax, and the grocer gets twenty five cents. That's his markup, and there's another two and a half cents that he pays. And when you add up the tax paid at each stage, it adds up to twenty cents, which is ten percent of the two dollar sales price. So you probably want to ask me. Why would we do it this way? Why do we have four, four people paying tax? Why not just have the grocer do it? Well, the reason is that if we do it this way, it makes the tax a lot easier to enforce. I mean, suppose the grocer cheats and doesn't collect the tax. If it's a sales tax, the government's going to be out 20 cents because the grocer's supposed to collect the whole thing. If it's a value-added tax, the government's only going to be out the two and a half cents the grocer was supposed to pay. Now, the way you would set up a value-added tax is it's called the credit invoice VAT, which sounds kind of technical. But basically it says that each producer along the way has to show that, has, has to show that the, the, the person they, they sell to, that they've already paid the tax. And if they haven't, then say that the miller gets uh, wheat from an unscrupulous farmer who doesn't pay his VAT, and there's no credit invoice to show, the miller would be subject to tax not just on the 75 cents in value added they add, but also the 60 cents that he paid the farmer. And the miller wouldn't like that. So that's why a VAT is thought to be a self-enforcing tax. But wouldn't that end up being very regressive since lower income people spend more of their income? That's, that's a good point. Now, my VAT proposal is a VAT to pay for health care. Under the proposal, uh, you'd get a voucher to pay for health health insurance, uh, and you could give it to your employer to pay for the health insurance you get at work, or you could buy it on uh, the kind of exchange that Senator Obama, President Obama has talked about. Uh, so this would be very valuable for a family. It might be worth $12,000. They, they would be paying 10% VAT on their income, you know, so if they earn th $40,000, they might be playing, paying $4,000 in VAT. They'd be getting a benefit that was worth far more. Actually, the high-income people under this program would be paying way more in tax and they would be getting in benefits. You know, the funny thing is that people talk about a VAT as a regressive tax and it makes you wonder why all over Europe they have value-added taxes. Actually, we're one of like two countries in the whole world that doesn't have one. It's certainly not because the Europeans care less about poor people than we do, but in Europe they use a VAT to pay for a very generous social safety net. Now, there is a problem with people at the very, very bottom. Low-income people are already getting health insurance for free. They're not going to get anything new under this proposal. But I take care of that by creating an income tax credit that would offset the cost of a VAT for people at the poverty level. And this might sound like a radical left-wing proposal, but in fact it's part of the national retail sales tax proposal, the fair tax that a lot of conservatives like. The difference is that I wouldn't use my tax to replace the income tax. And the other difference is that a sales tax would be really easy to evade, 
whereas a vat would be much easier to collect. Now, my libertarian friends say the vat's just a money machine, and if we put one in place, we're just going to have a big, bloated, inefficient government like France or Denmark. I like Denmark. Uh, okay, that's, <laughs> that, that is a common com complaint about a vat from conservatives. But I would argue that if you had a vat that was dedicated to paying for health care, that it would actually help to rein in the growth of government. Now, health care costs have been growing way faster than everything else government pays for. And unless we can find a way to control the rate of growth of that spending, that our budget is just going to explode over time. Now, think about what would happen if the government's paying for health care, financed with a VAT, and health care costs continue to grow really fast. That 20 cent charge on a loaf of bread is going to go up to 25, 30, 35 cents. Uh, I would say that you, you should encourage retailers to put the VAT on sales receipts so people would know how much things were, were costing. And for the first time, people would realize that growing health care costs were really costing them something personally. You know, right now people think they don't pay for health care. They get it from their employer or they get it from the government. And under this proposal, everyone would have a stake in it. So I think it would actually help to slow government. But I would love if it produced French bread and croissants and maybe even Danish pastries. <laughs> But aren't taxes like the last thing you want to talk about during a recession? Man, that is a great question, Rachel. Uh, it's Generally, it's true. You want to cut taxes and raise spending during a recession to try to boost the economy. But think about if we put in a VAT and we said next year there's going to be a 5% VAT and in 2011 there's going to be a 10% VAT, people would have an incentive to buy things now rather than waiting until next year. Uh, maybe even American cars. Uh, because the pr they know the price is going to go up next year, and it's going to go up the year after that, too. So it provided a pretty powerful boost to spending over the next few years. This is one tax increase that would help the economy get out of the recession. And over the long term, it would help because for the first time in a long time, we'd actually be paying for government rather than running more deficits every time we come up with a new program. I think this is just a brilliant, a brilliant plan. And I've got a long list of senators and congressmen who secretly support it and would never, <laughs> would never publicly acknowledge it. That's really the, the big problem with this proposal is that it's hard for politicians to endorse a brand new tax. But now that we've explained it, everybody's going to want to jump on board. Thanks, okay. Rachel. Well, thanks again for watching. If you have any questions about the VAT tax, any comments that you want to add, just write away, right below. And always make sure to check out taxpolicycenter.org if you want to read more about Len's VAT healthcare reform combination proposal. By the way, VAT tax is redundant because VAT is value added oh, tax. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me restate that then. No, 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 it's okay. I want to have the last word. <laughs> I'm, I'm the boss. I get to have the last word. <laughs>